Assalamu alaikum and hi to all of my friends, all my well wishers, all of those who act who have actually come up with a lot of criticism you can say and they have shown their concern regarding my concept that I have put forward regarding gravity. So there is a lot of curious curiosity that is what is this Enverity. So before I go into the detail of Enverity, let me clarify one thing categorically. Please, if you have this illusion in your mind that I have denied Newton's law of gravity, so please forget it. I, who I am to deny the Newton's law of gravity. Gravity is a natural phenomenon, universal phenomenon. So obviously no one dare to touch upon this that there is no gravity. So please consider this thing that I am not denying that gravity does not exist. My work that I have done regarding and verity that is actually anti-gravitational aspect or anti-gravitational factor. I am talking about that factor. Mean the factor which act against gravity. Now you will be wondering what are the criteria on which basis I am just trying to negate this kind of thing. Okay, the part of Newton that I actually challenged, I have just challenged only a single factor that Newton has explained regarding gravity and I have challenged that aspect that according to Newton's law of gravity, he actually gave his kind of, uh, you can say, explanation that whenever two different masses, they will be brought down from the same height if you let them fall, okay, if you let them fall from the same height under zero environmental conditions, both the objects they will come on earth at the same time. So, he very correctly, according to his knowledge, he said that masses are irrelevant. Masses have nothing to do with this thing. When something is in free fall, masses become irrelevant and all the objects in the free fall, they come on the earth at the same time. So, according to Newton, he claimed that mass is kind of irrelevant factor. Now here is my issue. When I was searching this thing, according to me, mean, mean, you just, uh, you be in that situation, of course, I mean, you'll be wondering, let's say if I have a big mass of 10 kilograms, just imagine, you are not a scientist, you are just a simple person, okay, you don't have any kind of scientific background. Just imagine, if you tell someone, I have 10 kilo, I have 10 kilogram mass, I'm going to drop it from a certain height, let's say 10 meters, and I have this mass, I mean like a coin, and it is weighing about, uh, let's say 50 grams. If I drop them from the same height, which object will fall, reach the earth first? So obviously everyone, even you also will say the same thing that the bigger mass will go down to the earth at the same time while the smaller mass will reach earth later on. Correct? But the fact is, both the objects they are going on the earth at the same time. So according to Newton, when he said, he said masses are irrelevant. So, don't you think, there is a confusion. Don't you think that a big mass and a small mass, how can these masses are irrelevant? When they are in the, even if they are in the free fall. My concept is that both the masses, they are not irrelevant, they are relevant factors. How come? Now, my basic point of view is, there is an upward thrust, which is actually determining whatever the object is falling on the earth, that object cannot exceed the acceleration 9.8 meter per second square. Agree? mean 9.8 meter per second square 
this is the acceleration maximum and no object can exceed this thing every object in the free fall can attain maximum 9.8 meter per second scale and this is totally accepted all over the world all over the scientific community correct that you will be wondering how come 9.8 meter per second scale can be fixed which force which kind of factor is there which is ensuring when any object is falling in free fall from a certain height that its acceleration can not exceed more than 9.8 met meter per second this means when two masses are coming down there is a force which is acting against the gravity in order to ensure that whatever the object no matter whatever the mass is that object comes on earth with maximum acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square got my point so this is the inverity is the force or factor which is ensuring whatever the object will fall on the earth it will be having maximum maximum acceleration 9.8 meter per second square of course so it's me according to my point of view according to my theory i mentioned this thing the masses which according to newton they are irrelevant i have proven them relevant factor that is only one thing that is creating a lot of fuss and people are having no idea what i'm talking about and they are just coming up with the statement blah 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 it is not like this I mean sometimes we have to listen to a person if you don't have knowledge you just contact that person and get the knowledge I mean just sitting back home and just writing the sentence they are not going to help us and secondly i don't claim whatsoever i say this concept whatever i have put, put forward let's say this is totally a rubbish kind of idea let's say but you my dear friends you must accept this thing every year on the surface of earth number of theories number of ideas number of hypotheses they float and out of them maximum maximum one or two percent of the ideas they remain they cannot be falsified rest of all the hypotheses all the concept all the theories they get falsified they are negated by their scientific community so there is not a big big issue means if you have let's say you are saying we have certain kind of uh, mean uh, reservation regarding your inverity okay you come up with your suggestion that okay on which parameter you are negating it that's all thank you very much inshallah very soon i will be providing you my video clip again in which i will be just explaining how this process of inverity how this inverity work what is the formula how can we calculate this amount and what are the units that i have given for the inverity till then yalla bye bye thank you